Gather around, folks. Have a little surprise for you. Now you're going to get some real entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. So I have a very, very wonderful special guest today. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Lucy Moon, and I also make YouTube videos. <laughs> Today, Lucy and I uh, are going to talk a little bit about therapy. We are. Have you ever talked about therapy on your channel before? I, I think I've tweeted about it. Okay. I don't think I've mentioned it, and it's very new to me. It is? Yeah. Ooh. I've been going for three months. That's exciting. Yeah, it's fresh. What kind of therapy do you go to? I do not know what kind of therapy it is. I assume, I think it's... Um, it's not CBT, I think it's talking therapy of some kind. Okay. But then there's also um, elements of it where it's about feeling um, and movement and about oh, really? existing in certain parts of my body. Yeah. Neat. My therapist like wants me to do that, but I'm really hesitant about it. I feel very silly. Yes. And then my therapist will turn to me and go, I think you feel anxious about this. And I'm uh -huh. like, oh, or like, I think you feel some resentment at me making you doing this. Uh huh. And, like, and then what do you mm -hmm. say? Maybe a bit feel funny about doing this for long periods of time. Uh -huh. And so, can you like give me an example of what sh your therapist might have you do? Okay, so one of the things is when I'm talking about something that makes me feel tense or anxious. Okay. She'll say, "Okay, we're gonna take a pause and we're gonna exist in your, you're gonna exist in your body." And she'll make me exist in my legs and in my knees and in up here and in my pelvic bowl, <laughs> which is an area I did not know existed until I started therapy. Pelvic <laughs> my pelvic bowl. So I picture this big bowl and like all of my organs around here just sit in it, and then my hips keep it together. <laughs> I like it. And then and then wherever the like tension is, which is usually for me, like in my chest and my neck and my head. Okay. Unknotting that tension. Do you find it effective? Yeah, I do for the tension part of it. Okay. But when it's more stuff like associating movements with calming down, that's when I'm a bit like That this doesn't is work for you. New to me. Okay. It might work at some point and I'm gonna keep persisting. Okay. Cause I'm my my approach to everything right now is like it may feel strange, but you've gotta grow somehow. Right, I totally agree. So you just got to do it for the time being. How did you find your therapist? So I went online. Um, I don't think anyone who looks for therapy knows where to find therapy. Yes, which is one of the reasons I wanted to make this video so bad. I googled local therapist. therapist. <laughs> Me too. One amendment. I googled local queer therapist just because I wanted to like have somebody who I knew would be accepting and educated. Yeah, and mine, I added alcohol. There you go. So it's, yeah, specifically tailored. But I think, I'm not sure if you found this, but um, we had a kind of search engine in the UK where you could go on and put in your postcode and it would tell you all of the accredited therapists in the area. Uh -huh. So useful. Thank you, England. And they all list their specialities, but most of them just take everything. Like, uh -huh. everything they're equipped to deal with. Uh -huh. So if you were looking for, yeah, like, um, support um, in in your gender and sexual identity, mm -hmm. most of them would just be like, yeah, sure, we can do that. And I'd be like, sure. no one's specialised. And with alcohol, all of them are like, yeah, we deal with alcohol. All of us deal with alcohol. And you're like, alcohol. no, but I want, I want someone who, like, really knows their ish about alcohol, mm. not just, like, can make it work. Yeah. You know? And so I had a call with a couple of them. Okay. And then... Was that um, scary? Yeah. It was scary because a big thing I wanted to mention was the fact that my job is, and YouTube is something I wanted to talk about and I needed them to know that that was weird, that it was a weird space that I was navigating at that moment and that they wouldn't understand it at first. Oh, okay. And I wanted to establish that as a dynamic. Okay. And so I wasn't even thinking about alcohol. I was like, oh, they'll be fine with alcohol. It's the YouTube stuff that they won't get. And sure. And really difficult. Uh-huh. But yeah, calling them up, I'm lucky. I don't feel like phone call uh, anxiety really. Sure. What about you? How did I find my therapist? Or, yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I, like, I Googled it and, and then I was clicking through. Um, and then I found Jamie. And the reason that I contacted Jamie is because she was the only one who offered a free 30 minute consultation. And I was super broke. And I thought the that was. The only one. Yeah, the only one. You posted on a website. That's. Most most places in the UK, they'll offer you a free consultation first. Oh, it was so cool. It was, it, yeah, that, that would have been nice. But it, mm. it, it, it worked out because we clicked immediately and it was great. That's but yeah, so, so I just went into the studio. Or not the studio. I call it everything. <laughs> I went into the studio. <laughs> I went into her office, which is like super, she's very hippy-dippy. So it has like 
candles and Buddhist things and like Zen gardens and yeah, it's really cool. So I went into her office um, and uh, we talked and I cried a lot and just from that 30 minutes I knew that it was going to be a good fit. That reminds me that I did not see this woman first. The lady I'm seeing is called Alison and she's lovely but I did try and see someone in April. Uh -huh. So I, I started or tried to start going about six months ago and she was a lovely woman but she was incredibly cold and uh. preferred not to give any information about herself at all or to seem empathetic. And I work sure. on empathy in my, uh -huh. the way I relate to people. Yeah. And so for me, that was like constantly hitting a wall uh -huh. and it just didn't work. You so needed some kind of connection and yeah, like for her to give a little something so you could kind of feel like you had a gauge on who she was. But if all she's doing is nodding and like writing and saying, well, how do you think you should? I don't know. Yeah. Exactly, whereas now my therapist is very open about um, if she feels it's relevant and appropriate, she will um, tell an anecdote about something that she has experienced. And I find that really, really helpful. Same. Mine does the same thing. And sometimes she asks, like, if you think I'm talking about myself too much, like, please let me know. I only want to share stories um, that are relevant, that I think, like, parallel your dilemma. But feel free to stop if you think I'm taking ownership of our session, which I also like. That's really nice that she recognizes that. How did you get Allison to understand YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yet, I but we're working on it together. <laughs> as, um, and she's a very open-minded woman. Yeah, she has a lot of life experiences with lots of things, including alcohol. Okay. Um, and so in general, um, she is very open-minded. And so she asks questions and she says, you know, so how do you make your money is a classic one, but to work out where my priorities lie and what matters to you the most about this thing. Why mm -hmm. do you do it? Right. And that it helps a lot to help establish what my job is. But it is weird. It is weird. It's super weird. It's the weirdest to explain, like, why something on the internet is giving you, like, an anxiety attack. Yeah, we haven't got that far yet. <laughs> That's something else. Uh-huh, yeah. And like the, ex like trying to get someone to understand the amount of scrutiny that a YouTuber faces. Gosh, that is, I can't, I need to start putting that across. Cause it's a lot. And you can tell your therapist that like, I experience like a high amount of scrutiny, but I don't think they really understand <laughs> like what, how, or why. <laughs> and uninvited as well and yeah. stuff you cannot avoid. Uh huh. That was something that um, actually um, our friend Bethan tweeted earlier. She was like, I just post a selfie and I just get criticism on how much makeup I'm wearing or how I do my hair. Right. And I, like, I can't ever, I can't ever go online and not see that. Yep. It is uninvited and just there all, all the time. Constant unsolicited criticism. Yeah. Do you feel like therapy has like provided positive results so far for you? It's making me think about stuff I never, never thought about. I thought that I knew myself quite well. Okay. But I know myself as a emotionally closed person. Uh -huh. I don't know myself in, in an emotional sense very well at all. Okay. And that's what I've learned. And I'm still learning and it's like unpacking so she says that I've put things in packages. So I'm unpacking all my packages. Sure. And like exploring them. I can tell it's long term. Yeah. So like I'm feeling the benefits now. I don't necessarily like going all the time. Really? So, so sometimes I love it and I'm in, in the mood. And sometimes I'm like, I could really not do with unpacking my shit today. Do you ever show up and have nothing to say? Often. Always. Pretty really? Much. Yeah, because I and don't does, know. Does that feel like a waste of money? Or no, like, not at it, all. Um, because I, f I find stuff. I'm, I'm a talker. Okay, so you find stuff to say when yeah. you get there. Okay. If you had to give people out there in the world thinking about starting therapy <laughs> some advice, what would you say? Start. Yeah, that's just it, really. Just do go. it. It'll make you feel so much better. Okay, okay bye. bye.